Um, we'll do one more Sturm Laville problem. And actually, I'm going to cheat a lot of the way through this. But uh, let's take the Bessel equation in general here to start with for at least integer integer uh, rows or news it was. Um, so this was the general form and here was the general solution though, for these integer ends, uh, where it was this linear combination of Bessel functions of the first and second kind. And it's in general valid on this uh, semi-infinite interval, zero to infinity. If you look at this equation, and we want to put it in self-adjoint form. So we associate, you know, we find the A, B, C, and D of the general equation. Remember, where was that general equation? Here was the general equation. And if once we identify the A, B, C, and D, we can put it then into self-adjoint form. We already did one example like that. Let's see what happens there. So taking the Bessel equation, we, uh, here's the A, it's the X squared. B is X, C is minus N. Uh, here's, here's, Lambda would be alpha squared and x squared would be e function. And then we put it in adjoint, self-adjoint form. You know, we need to evaluate this little thing here, e to the integral of one over x dx. Well, actually b over a. And b over a is x over x squared again, one over x. That integral is natural log of x, and e to the mount log x is just x. So that's our mu, and that's our, our r. Q was c over a times mu. C was minus n squared. A was x squared. Mu was x. Ends up being this. E was d over a times mu. B was x squared, A was x squared. That's just one, and the mu was x, so it's just x. So here it all is, self-adjoint form. And what's our weighting function? X. Um, on some finite interval, we're gonna be actually in, interested in not all the way to infinity, but from zero to some finite limit B. Thanks. And we're going to be interested in, well, on this interval, notice at the end point zero, where was R? R was X. R at zero is zero. So we're going to require boundedness at X equals zero. Remember, Bessel functions of the second kind are not bounded at x equals zero. So we have to set this C2 to zero, and we're just left with Bessel functions of the first kind. So our, let's see, our eigenvalues are going to be these alphas. And the eigenfunctions are going to be Bessel functions of the first kind. So in general, on that um, interval from zero to B, here is our orthogonality relationship. Oh, they're giving to you in the problem state. Um, the eigenvalues are those alphas. We know the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. And here's the general orthogonality relationship. What I have below here, that's where I'm kind of cheating. Uh, it's going to turn out we're really going to be using this for when n equals zero. This n equals zero. So our equations are just going to look like this first part here. 
M will be zero. So we're going to be doing this for J sub zero. Vessel functions are the first kind of order zero. And it's how we expand a function is actually going to depend on boundary conditions we're given. If we're given that the function must be, the function itself must be zero at that boundary condition of B, then here's how we expand a function. It's this infinite sum or infinite linear combination of Bessel functions of the first kind of order zero. And these coefficients of that guy are found by this formula. If the boundary condition is the derivative of the function at the end point B, then here's how we expand it. It's another infinite linear combination. It's these formulas for computing the coefficients. Um, just trust me on where these came from. It's kind of tedious and kind of confusing how to get there. What you get here is another way to expand a function. And it, it's called the Fourier Bessel series. You just say Fourier series, you assume it's either the trigonometric form or the exponential form. Um, but there's a Fourier Legendre series, and there's a Fourier Bessel series. Um, and we're going to use these later in the course. Anyway, here's where they came from. Remember, they're all orthogonal expansions. And Sturm Leville, Sturm Leville problem gives us a way to generate these orthogonal and complete sets of functions. Anyway, so that ends that little uh, module to do with eigenvalues, eigenfunctions, and Sturm Leville theory and ways to generate sort of new Fourier series.